CEO and Doctor of Physical Therapy for Recover. Today we're going to talk about vertigo, but before we get started, don't forget to hit click the subscribe and the like button. One of the most interesting cases that I've seen at our physical therapy clinic is when a patient crawled into the office and she had vertigo. And so I want to ask Erica, what is vertigo? <laughs> Yeah, so vertigo, um, also, also known as positional vertigo, is basically where you have crystals in your inner ear, which is part of your structure that helps with your hearing, and those crystals become displaced and they get into canals that are in your inner ear, and they spin around, and so it makes you, it makes it seem like the whole world is spinning around you, um, and sometimes it's so bad that people can't see their canals anymore, so that's what happened to that lady. That's in her case. She was crawling. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty severe. That's the only person I've ever seen do that, but it, it can happen. She couldn't stand up. So that was an extreme case. Yeah. Now I have had uh, bouts of vertigo in the past, and sometimes it's around that time of the month, but other times it could be, you know, a day after I went to a party and I'm dehydrated, and I'm laying on the couch and I'm spinning without having drinking any more alcohol, and it's a very uncomfortable feeling. And what I've noticed is if I try to reach over for a glass of water, it makes it worse and I feel like I'm gonna vomit. Mm -hmm. So what is there any relation to you know, being on your period or alcohol consumption and vertigo? Yeah, so typically, you know, positional vertigo by definition is gonna be dizziness that's caused by change of position of the person's head and or body. So that's why you were saying like when you, you know, kind of reach out or move your head. So most patients, when they have vertigo, they're gonna say things like, I can't bend forward like this and pick something up off the floor, or like tipping their head back in the shower and wash their hair makes them dizzy, um, turning their head, things like that. So change of position. But there are things that cause that. So yeah, we do now know that alcohol um, and also sugar cause the fluid that's in the inner ear to change um, consistency and to move a little bit faster. So anytime you move your head, that fluid moves. And so if it moves too fast, it can knock those crystals out of position and it can cause the vertigo. So yes, we do know that. Um, certain medicines actually cause that too. I've had vertigo caused by medication at one time as well. Okay. Now I had a friend who recently was diagnosed with vertigo and she sent me a video of her eyes going back and forth. What's going on with the eyes when there's a case of vertigo? So basically your eyes and your inner ear are connected. That's your, it's called your vestibular system. It helps with your balance. And so when there is vertigo and those crystals are spinning in the canal, you'll see what's called nystagmus in the eye, which it looks like it's going back and forth, but if you look at it really closely, it's actually spinning. So it spins in a clockwise or counterclockwise motion. And that helps the therapist to distinguish um, when they're doing an examination which canal it's in. Now you have three canals in the inner ear. You could have vertigo in one canal or you could have it in all three. You could have it in three in one side, three in the other side. You could have it in one canal on one side and none on the other side. There's so many different you know, combinations of it. That's why you need to go to a therapist um, or to an inner ear specialist that can actually look and diagnose that and know which exercise you need to do based on the canal that it's in. Oh, goodness. Yeah. So if vertigo is in all three canals, is the case more severe, like the lady who was crawling on the floor? It is, it's more severe, and there's, you know, when you're trying to treat it on your own, there's more exercises that you have to do, which sometimes becomes complicated. So that's why we work closely here with um, a couple of neurologists that are specialists in inner ear disorders, and they actually have a special chair that they've built, that they put patients in, that tips them into different positions, and it dumps all those crystals out. So sometimes it becomes almost impossible to treat it at home or with physical therapy, so you need the help of a, of a physician. Other times it's simple. It's one canal, it's one exercise, and you can do it for a few days and, and it's done. I've had patients that have done exercises sometimes for 24 hours and it's done. It, it dumps the crystals out. Yeah, okay. So vertigo treatments. Um, I know that sometimes you'll treat a patient with vertigo and it may be one session, boom, clear. Other times it may take a couple more sessions. Um, so I wanted to, you to talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, the typical vertigo treatment in physical therapy is usually pretty short. I think the, the longest I've ever seen a patient is maybe five sessions. Um, and it, it honestly depends on the person, but you teach them the exercises that basically dumps those crystals out of the canal. And then once it dumps them out of the canal, basically the body will kind of break them up and reabsorb them. 
Um, but if I have a patient that, you know, that's had a really severe case, like the lady that couldn't walk, typically that it seems like it's a big clump of crystals and so sometimes it'll go back into the canal and you have to do the exercises for a few more days. But yeah, I mean, it, it resolves pretty quickly. It's something that can easily be treated, which I find a lot of times is frustrating for patients because a lot of times when they go to the primary care doctor, even sometimes the ER, if that person is not specialized in vertigo, they send the patient home with some prescriptions and just kind of tell them to live with it. And you shouldn't be living with vertigo. If you have positional vertigo, it's treatable. You can get you can get rid of it. Yeah, so and again, my friend who went to a doctor and she got uh, Dramamine and Flonase and uh, she asked, hey, can I get a prescription for physical therapy? Well, guess what? It's gonna take her two weeks to get to that physical therapist. And so why we wanted to talk to you about this today is because you have direct access that you could schedule an appointment with Recover to get a vertigo specialist and get the answers you need and the treatments right away instead of hanging with vertigo for two weeks. Yeah, it's miserable. I've had it twice and I cannot imagine anybody that's done that, but I, I honestly have patients that have had vertigo for six months or longer. And the problem is, is that you start to, you know, in that case, they start to limit things in their daily life. Because like, for example, they know that turning their head to the side is gonna cause the vertigo or they can't sleep flat and so they start sleeping with five pillows under their head. Then what happens is that these people come in six months later with a severe neck issue also because they've tightened their neck and so they've created a bunch of other issues. So don't, don't wait. I don't know why anybody would wanna wait in vertigo. It's terrible. <laughs> so get treatment. Yes. <laughs> And it's, uh, the other thing to mention is not every therapist knows how to treat vertigo. We, you know, in PT school, we touched on it for, I don't know, maybe one lesson. I took a bunch of PT and education courses after college because I, I thought it was interesting um, and not a lot of people treat it. So you have to find someone to actually specialize in it. Otherwise, you also are not going to get better if you're not doing the correct exercises. So. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, that was great information today on vertigo. Stay tuned for more videos from Recovered.